Hello, today I'm going to introduce you to the Telemate TM900, the latest in our Telemate series. This one has been placed into our Nautilus uh, rugged and waterproof uh, enclosure. With this now you get the display, which gives you the advantage of being able to uh, decode caller ID, caller waiting and similar messages. We can display line voltages and so on. We have the same or similar uh, photoluminescent keypad. We have ambidextrous operation with the main controls being in the handle area and accessible whether you're right or left-handed, so up to you. We have the uh, long glass fiber reinforced nylon belt clip that you'll be familiar with from our other products. And recently we've introduced a strain relief to the cable here. Not that we had problems before, but it just gives a bit of extra protection. And out of the box, the first versions of this product will be supplied with the uh, angled nose, better nails um, and spike clips, plus the RJ11 connector. The first thing you'll have to do is open up the battery compartment. We have a label to inform you to do this and it's very easy to do. There are three screws, one, two, and a third one hiding underneath the uh, belt clip here. They don't have to be done tight because the battery cover only covers where the cables go. So if you need to change the cable, you can place a new cable in here. So we have the, the red terminal black terminal and the ground terminal here if you want to use that. Uh, the cables are routed through this labyrinth so that's why they even without the extra rubber here they, they are strain relieved. Um, the battery itself is fitted into this area up here so just check there's no dirt on the knife edge that goes around the battery but if you look into this hole here you can see there's actually a breathable membrane which keeps the enclosure inside um, at the same uh, sort of pressure and vapor pressure as uh, the battery compartment. And there's another one here outside the battery compartments area which allows breathing of the main compartment into open space because the rest of the, the uh, battery cover is not sealed but the battery itself has a secondary seal. Replace the cover and retighten. Just finger tight. Nothing has to be super tight here. Okay, so let's introduce you to the TM900's interface. You can see I've put the battery in so it's powered up and it's already showing there's zero volts. We have three main controls underneath the handle here. Top one we call the talk button, the middle one we call the monitor button, and the lowest one the mute button. So these fall very easily under your first, second and third fingers. And as I say, whether it's left or right-handed, they're equally accessible. The monitor button is the one you're going to press the most. So there's a higher pitch beep when it turns on. And then you'll see something in the display. A slightly lower pitch beep when you turn off and the display will go clear. If you press the talk button, it'll go ready to go off hook. So it's still saying there's zero volts, but you've got the little telephone icon saying I'm ready to be a phone. And notice there was a double beep. So I can go back on hook by pressing the monitor button. So the mid mid middle one, monitor button. Notice the only thing that's happened is that the telephone symbol's gone away. We're still showing voltage. So we haven't actually turned off the phone yet. A second press of the monitor button, the middle one, will actually power down the unit. If there's zero volts on the display, the unit will power down after five minutes anyway, just to save the battery. Let's show you some of the other setup functions. So we'll just power it up, press the monitor, the monitor button once. Now, if we look at the display, let's quickly go through this. We can see this, this button up here is called redial and pause. It shows like a recycling symbol and a pause. <laughs> the second button is called phone book and memory and has a little book icon on it. 
Then we have the flash or time to break recall. It also has a mention of intercom on it. We have then speaker and volume. And uh, we'll come on to all each, each of these functions as we go through. We obviously have the normal number buttons, including the star and the hash you'd normally find on a phone. But we have a little line joining these two together with a little sort of menu symbol. And the idea here is if you press both these buttons together, this will actually pop up the settings menu for the phone. At the top, you can see the version of software and the latest checksum. Um, we have an option to go back or out of this menu. We can go into setup, we can do DTMF detection or toner mode. So let's talk about, oh, on the bottom line, of course, we have the battery status and its voltage. So toner mode, um, if you are used to pair tracing, then this can effectively become a pair tracing oscillator. Let me give you a quick example of that. Option three allows you to use a toner function. Uh, this has two cadence rates. It's ideal for tracing inside wiring around a home or a business. So once you've switched it on in this mode, if you take your pair tracing probe, I'm just using one of our new uh, 200 XP50s here, then that tone is detectable on the wire pair. Option two on this menu allows you to detect DTMF signals. So whether that's uh, incoming DTMF caller ID or maybe from an alarm auto dialer or something similar, it's quite useful. So you can hook up your um, telephone in parallel with uh, an alarm auto dialer, for instance, switch it into mode two, and then it's ready waiting uh, for any DTMF. So any, so any DTMF symbols that appear here will be shown, uh, but you also see um, an approximate uh, power level in DBM. Uh, so that's quite useful for debugging whether it's sending a sensible level. In the settings section, then we can choose a different language, um, general settings for the phone, a change of the ringtone, or adjust the contrast of the screen. I'll just show you the languages because we have English, Spanish, French, German, Italian, and Turkish available. Now I'll go on to describe more of the functions of the telephone. Right, commonly when you're going to be testing a telephone line, first thing you're going to be checking for is voltage. Now imagine you're in a exchange area where there are lots of lines and you're looking for one which is dead or you're looking for those which are live. Well one of the things is if you've switched this unit on into monitor mode so it's saying zero volts, as soon as you connect to a, a line with a, a valid voltage, um, I've just got my other hand here pressing the button, you hear the unit go beep. And that's quite useful because you can go down a whole set of uh, connections and just check whether there's simple voltage present. I'm on a line simulator here, so that's why it's only seeing 8 volts. Now, the other thing that you'll see in this display, I'll come a little bit closer to the camera here. So the other thing you're going to see in the display is when the, when the telephone line rings, you'll actually see the frequency of ringing. You'll get an indication as well, and obviously you get the audio. So that's ringing, and after a couple of seconds it'll just say missed call. If there was a caller ID presented, it would actually leave the number as well, missed call and the number. We'll try and demonstrate that shortly. If, when I'm on a line, and okay, it's a line simulator, it's only saying 8 volts. If I'm on a line and I press the talk button, remember the top button here, you hear a double beep, and it goes off hook and we actually can see then the loop current. So we can actually see there is current flowing. We also get the icon indicating that we're in a telephone call. And at that point I can actually send DTMF and call and so on. We're not hearing a dial tone because again this is just a line simulator. Let's now talk about the DigiAlert and digital services and telephone safety protection functions. DigiAlert is a feature which identifies the presence of non-audio signals on a telephone line. Basically high frequencies that are usually used to carry digital data, whether that's ISDN or DSL or some other even proprietary systems, uh, perhaps pair gain systems in the old days. <clears throat> what the telephone does before you actually go off hook, because here we are in uh, monitor mode, and if I was to go off hook by pressing the talk button, 
you notice it took about two seconds to actually go off hook and show us the current. What it's actually doing in that time between you pressing the button and it actually going off hook is that it is actually looking at the line voltage, checking that there's a sensible amount of voltage there, so greater than 5 volts, otherwise it won't go off hook at all, um, less than um, 80 volts, where it would give you a sort of intermediate voltage warning because some extended circuits are in that sort of voltage range and what you can actually do if it if you get the warning for high voltage or intermediate voltage you can press the torque button and go off hook if there's a very high voltage which i can simulate with this box here <coughs> so anything over 110 volts i'll just put my hand over the speaker a little bit anything over 110 volts like this is going to say over voltage and you get the warning triangle so a little bit like if you get the continuous ring you just disconnect carefully from the line uh, in this case i've just got a switchable um, test box so we can identify digital services we can identify voltages let's show you what happens with a digital service so i'll turn a simulator on so there's actually now a hiss in the background you might be able to hear it faintly it. if i turn the speaker on it's it's very loud um, but there's basically a out of band signal on the line which is triggering what we call the out of band detector or the digital detector on the unit. That's only active when you actually try and go off hook. So if I press the talk button now, one, two, three, what it's actually doing is <clears throat> analyzing the line and you hear digital warning and see the digital warning. And that's this warning signal is basically saying there is something which is not just audio on the line. If you want to go off hook, you can. And what you do is just simply press the talk button a second time. And that goes off hook. And okay, on this line simulator, it's less than 10 milliamps, but uh, it would just go off hook and you'd hear dial tone as normal. So that's Digilert um, and the a description of the over voltage. Let's show you the phone book in operation. Okay, now I have the TM700 connected up to a real telephone line. So we can see it has a normal sort of 52 volts uh, present. And if I go off hook, we actually get a dial tone. Um, one subtlety that I should point out is that the speakerphone function on here, because this has full hands-free speakerphone, we have a microphone here at the bottom of the keypad, and the speaker and, you know, is there. Um, I'll just send a code. So this is the... So this is the open reach test uh, <coughs> number. <coughs> and one thing you'll notice that when you're in speakerphone mode is that the mute is function. This, this in indication here is that the microphone is muted. And that's um, basically meaning that you can use the, the mute button down here as a press to talk button. Now one thing that, um, I'll turn the speaker off so we don't get so much noise now. Um, so I've just dialed a number and if we look in the phone book, uh, in the sort of redial memory, sorry, I press the redial key, we can see the digits that were called up there. Um, I can delete the last digit, which I did by pressing the mute button. <coughs> I can delete each individual character or I can press and hold the mute and it'll delete the entire number. So that's how you use the last number redial memories from here. I can bring that one back up. I'll just delete that last digit and I'll go back off hook and that will dial the um, test number again. And I'll do a ring back test. So what I've got to do is clear the call. So now we actually get a number displayed. We get the ring back and I can go off hook. Clear that one down. <clears throat> so this has given us an example now of, of what happens with uh, an incoming call. So if I now look at the redial list, the first number in there is actually going to be that number that came in from the from the automatic test number. The second one that will be in there is the one that I dialed, 170701, which I did for the, the ring back test, um, and so on. So if I wanted to actually save 
the 17070 that I have on the screen here, for instance, to the phone book to turn the speaker off. Um, I can do that by keeping that on the screen, pressing the phone book button, which would give me option to recall. A second time gives me option to store, so I'll save that in memory 8, for instance. So I've stored 17070 in memory 8. And as I say, I can clear the display. Now, what I'll do is here, I'll press and hold the mute key, and it'll delete all those digits after a couple of seconds. And if I wanted to, then I want to recall 8. Put the same number up, but I can recall 8. Obviously, I can then go off hook and dial it. So when there's nothing on the screen, if I wanted to go scrolling through the memories, I can just go through here. So um, all the way through there's memory 8, 9, back to the beginning. 0, we've got pre-programmed with the tempo support number if you wanted to dial it, and so on. Flash hopefully is self-explanatory. That is a timed break recall. So whilst during a call, you need to call up a secondary dial tone to do a special function. You can use the flash key. But it has two functions. It does other things when you're in monitor mode. So if I'm here, I'm connected to a line, I'm in monitor mode, I can try and press intercom and it'll actually fail. The reason being there's voltage on the line. You can't do intercom with this system. Uh, that's been the same from the PE830, the TM700, and this one. You can't do intercom when there is DC on the line. It uses uh, the line itself exclusively. So let me disconnect from the real line. And I'll take a second one. So I'm just hooking these two together. I have, uh, oops. The... So what I can do now because there is zero volts present on the circuit, I can actually press intercom. And it'll give me two options. One is smart intercom, and two is just intercom. So if you've prearranged a, a process with your colleague who's further down the cable, perhaps you're doing a, a cable changeover or a repair, um, you've arranged a signal, and you can just signal to him and just say, I'm going to start talking. You know, wave your arm out the, the hole, whichever. Uh, you can just use intercom. But smart intercom has the option to um, call a ring the far end unit. So if I leave this one here and I press talk now, because it's see the instructions are saying press talk to go off hook. You hear some beeps going on and you hear the far one ringing. And if I press talk on the far unit, they're now both online. And at that point, you can actually talk. If I turn the speaker on on the far one, you can hear that that's coming through. And then press mute, or monitor, sorry, monitor to clear down. So that's the intercom mode. I think we've covered pretty much everything now. The buttons, ambidextrous, the, mon the menu, we've done the digilert and protection functions, We've covered the, uh, well, the glow-in-the-dark keypad. I could try and show that here, but I don't think it'll come out very well on, on the camera. But trust me, when, when, if it's been in bright sunshine like this, uh, and then you go into the, into the cupboard under the stairs or wherever, uh, you can, it just gives you a bit of a, a guide with the buttons. We do not have a backlight on the display. The cords are replaceable. So this one will be called CS23 which is the replacement cord for the TM900 as delivered now. That's the one with the um, large alligator clips plus, oops, got a bit of a tangle here. So it's the large alligator clips plus the RJ11-14 um, stroke 14, uh, plug, uh, Vira, sort of a splitter. So that is the TM900, the latest in our Telemate series. <laughs>